The follow-up to the beloved Pixar film Inside Out introduces a brand new human feeling, boredom. More precisely, the jadedness and lack of effort that settle in during adolescence. Why? No. Oh, nicknames! I'm gonna call you Wee Wee. No. But why did they call this emotion ennui? The difficult challenge for Inside Out 2 was to bring in new, complex emotions, integrate them into the world that first the film created, and make them work with the old emotions, all while keeping things simple and easy to follow for the audience. Anxiety's takeover of headquarters and joy, along with the other core emotions exile and return to reclaim control over the young girl, occupied a significant portion of Inside Out 2's running time. Ennui lurks in the backdrop. She solidifies her persona as the embodiment of boredom by spending most of her time on her phone. During Anxiety's full-blown takeover, Ennui is mostly just there in headquarters, ignoring her fellow new emotions. Given her small part, it makes sense to believe that she might be one of the characters in the sequel that gets overlooked. In the sequel, it was also revealed that Ennui's use of her phone is crucial since instead of physically going to the console to push the buttons, she can control it with an app on her phone. However, there is a turning point when she betrays anxiety alongside embarrassment and envy and collaborates with Joy and the others to erase Riley's tainted sense of self and replace it with a new one made up of distinct core memories. Throughout the 96 minutes of Inside Out 2, Ennui's lack of interest is demonstrated, but it seems as though she's hardly there at all. It's safe to say that even without her, the sequel is capable of standing alone. There's also fleeting moments when Ennui smiles or expresses worry for Riley and other feelings that are going through her head. These emotional glimmers imply that Ennui's function is more nuanced than it first seems. She is more than just an incidental supporting figure. Furthermore, the potentially harmful effects of boredom aren't really addressed in Inside Out 2. Rather, it emphasizes the beneficial development function that boredom serves in assisting Riley in adjusting to the challenges of adolescence. Some might argue that Ennui ought to have played a bigger part in the film's plot rather than being given such a small part. However, Ennui's ability to control the headquarters console through an app on her phone is one of her most amazing traits. This unexpected conclusion suggests that Ennui's phone serves as more than a distraction. She uses it as a tool to manage Riley's emotions and highlights the importance of digital technologies for teenagers, emphasizing both their advantages and disadvantages. The console's dominance by Ennui demonstrates how emotional responses and decision-making can be influenced by boredom and detachment. Her persona casts doubt on the idea that boredom is only a bad thing. It implies that people may also use it as a defense mechanism to keep themselves apart from intense feelings and circumstances. The word ennui has gained popularity recently. Dozens of people who are unfamiliar with this French-originated word whose prevalence on social media is only growing ask, what is ennui? Although the term has been going viral for a while, people's interest in it has been sparked by the trailer for the upcoming Disney Pixar film, which is a follow-up to the critically acclaimed Inside Out. Riley, the movie's teenage protagonist, experiences four new emotions in her life. Apart from the well-known emotions such as anxiety and envy, there will also be Ennui, a teenager with a violet hue, apathy, and a lazy stare at her phone. Ennui, portrayed by actress Adele Exacopoulos, responds in a French accent to the other character's perplexity regarding her name. It's what you would call boredom. Many users have been confused because they don't know the meaning of the word. Disney has always been committed to bringing attention to apathy among teenagers. Ennui was one of the emotions that was going to join joy, sadness, anger, fear, and disgust. According to those in charge of Inside Out, which was released back in 2015, would calling a polymorphic word with deep and historical roots in French culture, boredom, be oversimplifying it? What makes boredom so unique that Disney feels the need to share it with a worldwide audience? Ennui is a feeling that can be physically experienced as a decrease in energy and a generalized feeling of tiredness. It can also be psychologically experienced as weariness and emptiness brought on by idleness and a shift in how time is perceived, which makes time seem to drag on. It manifests when a person is unable to carry out a fulfilling activity in an uninteresting environment and when a lack of dedication, interest, involvement, and meaning is evident. Contrary to popular belief, boredom is more prevalent in contemporary culture. This phenomenon may be attributed to ongoing 
ongoing technological exposure, ongoing overstimulation, and the overvaluation of entertainment, digital connections, and productivity in today's society. It's a state that reflects our time quite well. During the 19th century, ennui became more prevalent and significant in French culture, particularly in literature and politics. The former French foreign minister forewarned Parliament in 1839 that France is a bored country. This phenomenon, however, is not limited to French spirit. Individuals from various social backgrounds and cultures can also exhibit it. We can all experience common feelings like boredom and lack of motivation at any point in our lives. The pressure to succeed, job insecurity, and constant exposure to social media and technology can cause ennui in the millennial generation, so they're not immune. However, it's crucial to remember that not every member of this generation or any other is equally affected by boredom because everyone's experiences and perceptions differ depending on their unique circumstances and background. Alternatively, the interior of boredom is, as the psychologists James and John put in a recent study, a call to action, a signal to become more engaged. That is to try something different. Despite the fact that boredom is linked to indifference and disengagement, they may indicate a need for change. My research demonstrates how media companies have been increasingly focusing on it. They put a lot of effort into solidifying the connection between reaching for our electronics when we're bored. Many times we see advertisements on our phones promising to help us fight boredom whenever and wherever it arises. We scroll aimlessly because we're bored or afraid of becoming bored. However, studies have indicated that the more we use our smartphones to occupy our time and prevent boredom, the greater the risk of growing bored. Teenagers are especially affected by this. In all, if you're wondering why she's on Wii instead of just boredom, director Mann wanted a bilingual character. Unfortunately, even though her name describes her, she came across as more sarcastic than bored or uninterested when she took over Riley. This is clear because Ennui is the one who originated in sarcasm, which she uses to shield Riley from humiliation by using sarcasm as a coping mechanism. She claims that she has been waiting her entire life to accomplish it. Although Ennui and Anxiety didn't collaborate as closely as Envy did, it was evident from her brief appearance at work that both were misidentified. Even though she wasn't what her name implied, Ennui was still effective in Inside Out 2. Riley experienced a range of new and complex emotions as she approached puberty, including envy and anxiety, which are difficult to pinpoint because they can mean different things. Ennui and envy and anxiety became sarcasm and rudeness, but anxiety and envy became an urge to fit in with others to be liked by others. Riley could have shut herself out of being ennui and envy combined, but anxiety kept her spirits up. It was a difficult task for Inside Out 2 to introduce new and complex emotions while also making everything simpler for the audience to follow and comprehend. The challenge was to integrate the new emotions into the world that the first film created and make them work with the old emotions. Though her name was mistaken, Ennui performed flawlessly. Riley's unique form of defense against the overstimulation that comes with adolescence is provided by Ennui, which evens out Riley's emotional highs and lows. Inside Out 2 could even have done a better job of utilizing Ennui as the new emotion that ultimately supports Joy and the others in their initial fight against anxiety. By doing this, Ennui would have been able to stand out more because the audience would have been able to gain insight into the new other emotions and herself by learning more from her perspective. A potential Inside Out 3 presents an opportunity to rectify the use of Ennui in the sequel, much as the most recent film enhances the roles of fear, anger, and disgust by highlighting more of their dynamic with joy in an unexpected mental journey. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.